Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. It's Tuesday, and we give the same title to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcasts. We call them our Tract and Truth Tuesdays, and that's where we're at today. Now, if you listen to the broadcast day by day, you know that we do book by book, verse by verse studies in the Word of God. But on our Tuesday broadcast, we set those aside because Bible Tract Echoes is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracts Incorporated, as my announcer said, and our main thrust of ministry is publishing gospel tracts. We do them in different languages, and we give them away all over the world free of charge as God enables us, and God's been enabling us to do that so far for 81 years. Now, you got to kind of take God at his word, and when God says he'll be faithful to his word, and faithful to God's people, then that's exactly what he will be. For 81 years, God's been faithful to us through the people that God has brought alongside of us, people like you, who share in the burden of getting the gospel tools called tracks into the hands of people. I want to put gospel tracks into your hands, please. Now, for today, my Bible is sitting open to a very familiar portion of Scripture in Romans chapter 3. If you can, stop, get your Bible out, and open there with me. Romans chapter 3. Get something on which you can jot down our contact information because you'll need to give us your name and address. And to do that, you'll need to know our phone number, our website, our mailing address, something. My announcer is going to make all that known to you. But right now, let me tell you what I want to do today. I want to deal with an aspect of gospel work today that could easily be considered a very, very basic, basic thing. Now, we love telling the gospel story, but sometimes, though, we have to stop and tell the person to whom we're talking that they are a sinner. And what I mean is that we need to show them that they are a sinner. If you were listening and you're one of those budding theologians, I know what you may be thinking. Your ears may be burning because for a theologian, the point of view from a theologian is that only God can convict and convince a lost soul of their sinfulness, and I wholeheartedly agree. But tell me, if a person you're talking to says something like this, I'm not a sinner, Or if they say, well, I'm not so bad that God would keep me out of heaven. If they say something like that, would you at that point stop and just wait for God to talk to their heart? Or would you talk on behalf of God to that person? Well, the answer is we would talk to them for God. That's not capricious on our part because you and I are told that we are God's ambassadors to give out the gospel. And part of that is helping people see their lost condition. How do we do that? How do we help a person who does not think they are a sinner or a bad enough sinner that God will keep them out of heaven? That's my simple goal today. Stay tuned and let's learn how to be more effective in soul winning with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, before I go on there and read out of Romans chapter three, I have a gospel tract in my hand. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It's actually in our web address. Jot this down, why don't you? Our website is www.bibletracks, that's a track with an S at the end, bibletracksinc.org. You can go to the website and order a free sample packet or wait for my announcer. He'll give you other formats, but... 
in the sample packet I want to give you is over 40 tracks. One of them is this one entitled, I Have Plenty of Time. I Have Plenty of Time. This track was written for teenagers, and it's based upon a true story of a gal named Mary when she was 19. She heard the gospel. Her heart was convicted about needing Christ as Savior, but she was headed for a party and wanted to postpone. And the sad part is that night she was in a car accident. Her life ended, and frankly, we don't know what she ever did with the gospel. I can't see hearts. God can only do that. But friend, a lot of people are postponing dealing with the conviction of sin in their life like this gal Mary did. This gospel track lays out the warning that today is the day of salvation. Would you let me send you this track as part of that sample packet? Just wait for my announcer or go to the website. Either way works and lets you and I become partners in giving out the clear plan of salvation. It's found in all of our gospel tracks. I'm going to wait on reading some Bible verses at this point in time because I want to tell you about some people that are telling the gospel. These people are found in the Fort Campbell, Kentucky area. And every year for the last eight years, they've taken a day, gone to a truck stop, and there they buy gasoline for military people on that one day. Typically, they buy gas for almost 1,800 soldiers in one day. It costs them about $50,000 in fuel cost. Why do they do it? couple of reasons. Number one, they want to show their appreciation for military people. But number two, when they buy them the gas, the appreciativeness in the heart and the life of the military men and women is such that they can then hand them a gospel track and say, hey, we, we love you. We love buying gas for you. We'd love for you to read this. It talks about how you can have a right relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a tremendous opportunity Would your local church be willing to spend $50,000 to get the gospel into the hands of 1,800 people? The gospel work sometimes takes money, just like it does to operate gospel tracks like at Bible Tracks Incorporated. Friend, let's be involved in the gospel with our mouth, with our prayer life, with our pocketbook, and by giving out gospel tracts. Well, come with me, please, here, and let's deal with sharing the gospel. What if somebody does not believe that they are a sinner? What do we do? Well, there are two options for you. One I don't like and one I do like very much. The option number one that I don't like is this. We can use a rational or what some people call a psychological approach. Option number two that I like is the Bible fact approach. Now, option number one, the rational approach, and by this I mean that we challenge the person's thought process. As I said, I discourage this approach because I've always found it ends up usually in a philosophical discussion rather than a Bible discussion. And even if we win that discussion, we still haven't gotten the person to Christ. So we're then back thrust onto the Bible option. So why don't we just start there? Option number two, when somebody says that they do not believe they are a sinner or they're that bad of a sinner that God would keep them out of heaven, let's use the Bible fact approach. And to do this, I almost always begin by asking the person this question. Have you ever read in the Bible for yourself to see what it says about every person, including you? Sometimes the person has grown up in a church that used the Bible, or they went to Sunday school, they went to vacation Bible school, or they had a godly grandparent, so they have read the Bible and what it says about sin. But often the person has will say to me, no, I've never read what the Bible says. And at that point, I challenge them with this. I say, would you be courageous enough to read what the Bible says about who and what you are right now? You see, the person has heard a lot about what others say the Bible says. And I remind them of that. I'm not interested in what your grandparents say the Bible said, or your parents say, or your friends say the Bible says. Are you courageous enough to find out and read for yourself what the Bible actually says itself about you 
right now. Now, when I do that, I do it with a tenderness in my voice. I do it with facial expressions that communicate to the person that I care about them and that what I'm asking them to do is of great burdensome importance to me. There's a lot of ways to communicate. Words are one of them. There's nonverbal communication, though, like your facial expression and the tone of voice. They are important. Now, if they say that they would be willing to read what the Bible says for themselves, I then turn to some very well-known passages in the Bible. I like to have my, my New Testament with me. To do this, I often have a track that has these verses in them. The first one is well known to you, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I go to this verse and I tell the person, this verse lays out the condition, notice the C word, the condition of all people, for all have sinned. We've come short of the glory of God. God sets the standard of who gets into heaven. Sin makes us fall short. I then back up in Romans chapter 3, and I have them read verses 10, 11, and 12. That's the one that begins, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God, and so on. Because this is the condition of all people. As I come, chapters 3, verses 10 and 11 just emphasizes the condition they're in. And before I leave Romans chapter 3, I have them read verse 18, which says this, There is no fear of God before their eyes. Ooh, there's no fear of God. And again, all this deals with the condition of people. That's what the Bible says. Next, I take them to Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I've now moved from the condition of sinners to the consequence of being a sinner. The wages of sin is death. And I explained to them that there's physical death and spiritual death. But finally, I turn them to Romans 5, 8. Here is God's compassion for sinners, which says, but God commendeth or demonstrates his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, at this point, I simply ask them this question. Based on God's word, are you a sinner? Does God say you are dead in your sins? And I wait for them to give me their answer. If they still reject their sinfulness and their fact that they are dead in sin and have no right to heaven, I then say this, well, I'm sorry. Since you reject God's statements about your sin status, then he rejects to give you his compassion to free you from your sin. When I say that, that often opens the door to a whole lot more gospel sharing with that person. Friend, we need to be gospel workers. I want to help you be a gospel worker. I need more partners in being a gospel worker. Please let me send you that sample packet of gospel tracts. My announcer is about ready to come back on. He's going to give our phone number, going to give our web address again. He's going to give our mailing address. Use the method that suits you. But friend, let me give you the gospel tracts. And if you want to help us take the gospel around the world, then why don't you consider supporting Bible Tracks Incorporated. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.